Hey everybody, I'm Chris Thomas and this is Land Flipping 101 where you can learn how to earn your financial freedom through land investing even if you're a complete beginner with no experience. And today I am back after being gone last week. I've been trying to do these every Friday at noon central time, one o'clock Eastern. And last week I dropped my son off at college, my oldest son, my oldest child for his freshman year. So I had to miss, but today I'm back and I'm going to be talking about six hidden benefits of rural vacant land investing. So welcome, and uh, this will last about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. So welcome, I'm glad you're here. So the past, uh, okay, the first, first I'm gonna uh, answer a question I saw in the live, uh, sorry, the public Facebook group. In the past couple of days, I've posted some of the negative responses to my blind offer purchase agreements, which have gone out in the mail, and it never ceases to amaze me how angry some people get. <laughs> Or I should say how angry they allow themselves to get because it's really a choice, but I digress. I just choose to ignore them and um, Ryan Jones was asking about that process and Ryan, you can visit landflipping101.com to receive the exact letter and purchase agreement that I am sending out every week. I think a lot of people come to vacant land investing with a mindset of home investing, house investing and just buying their own home and they can misunderstand vacant land as an investment strategy or you know they've never really thought about it as an option and I'm not sure what your experience has been with things like buying a house or dealing with rental properties or just other types of properties which you have to keep up and maintain but if you know anything about those properties you know they they can be a lot of maintenance and management and I love the fact that when I buy land it just sits there and nothing happens and you don't have to do anything to it. <laughs> just want to say hey to Andy. Welcome Stephen and Wesley. I'm glad y'all are here. Um, you know when you buy a piece of land at the right price then you can also sell at a great price and um, then buyers will come out of the woodwork. I mean, obviously pricing is key in any real estate investment, but I just want you to know land is just no different. If you buy it the right way, you can flip it for a profit without really doing anything to it. No maintenance, no constant coordination of workers. You just buy it, you, you can get the deed and you can resell it, or you could do it like me and I usually simultaneously close in the states where that's available. Hey Joe, I see your question. I'll read that in just a second. Um, I have had some extra available time lately so I've been answering most of the seller calls coming in this week. It's been awesome to experience so many nice people trying to educate me on the price of farmland in Iowa. <laughs> Apparently nobody in Iowa will ever sell to me. At least that's the feedback that I've been getting. <laughs> Joe's asking, how many cents on the dollar are my offers? They're 25% they're of retail, so 25 cents on the dollar. Another one of the reasons why I love buying vacant land properties is because, unlike the housing market, there's very little competition. While all these other people are out there focusing on houses and buying, you know, the, the people who are, are focused on buying vacant land are cleaning up, myself included. I currently have 26 properties for sale and there just aren't that many people out there focused on 100% um, just rural vacant land like I am. So Ben Fruin asked about, um, he said, I want to learn to find the right buyer. I've had several deals fall through because of no end buyer. And I know that must be frustrating for you. Um, and what I would say to that is I would just make sure you have a website set up featuring your listing and providing all of the available content that anyone would need to know about the property. Then create a listing on Facebook Marketplace and post it into se uh, several relevant groups which may find it appealing. And also use a flat fee listing service to get it on the MLS or hire a real estate agent who can confirm your pricing and uh, but do make sure that they have a good strategy or a buyer's list so you can sell it fast. 
a really cool benefit about vacant land is that there's actually a lot of ways that you can buy and sell these properties without ever having to see them in person. We are just buying and selling dirt and trees and grass. So it's a little different from houses and rental properties where you need to inspect the condition of the HVAC, the plumbing and the fixtures. So there are just far fewer factors and issues that can go wrong. Now you do still have to do some due diligence to understand if it's a good investment. But the great thing is you can look into a lot of these things without actually going to the property and seeing it in person. You know, things like calling the county's register of deeds, the tax assessor, the planning department, even calling local realtors and getting them involved. You know, there's a ton of ways to find out everything you ever need to know without having to travel out there and be there in person. Let's see, hi Chris and Sam. Um, I have, Chris, I have not had any problems using a flat fee MLS. No, even in Texas, I'm able to do it. Piper Parker asked about how I price so many mailers each week. <laughs> That's a great question. I'm using a software called Priced, and I've grown to trust their city pricing for five plus acres. I believe there's still some work to be done with their software on the under five acre size lots. You know, another great benefit about buying vacant land is that it's extremely inexpensive to own. Some properties have sold, I've heard of, for $100. I mean, to me, it's, it's kind of a waste of time. But when can you buy land, um, you know, when you can buy land for thousands or even hundreds of dollars, it's just not that hard to own them free and clear, which means there's very little that you need to worry about or pay for on an ongoing basis. I tend to be a quick flipper though, so um, I don't do a lot of those buy and holds, but I know that th that is a good strategy. Jimmy Midkiff said the most efficient use of um, his time is what he wants to know about because his time is limited. So he's asking, he's, he just said the most efficient use of my time. Okay, I would say that if there was only one thing you could do today, to get your real estate investing business moving forward, it would be send mail. So whatever you have to do to get mail out the door. Another thing I love about land also is that it's a finite asset. So you've heard the saying, you know, they're not making any more of it. And it's a great way to diversify from stocks, from housing, or precious metals. <laughs> Even if you can't buy, or I should say, especially if you can buy land in the path of growth, you could find yourself with an asset that a lot of people really want to get their hands on sometime in the future. Like I live in Nashville and recently they announced a 13 acre development that Oracle is moving to town. It's going to literally be positioned right downtown in an area that's currently full of industrial buildings. Now, in five years from now, that is going to be a super hot property and anything in that general area, which right now is kind of like not a great area of town, I mean, would be a great investment. Now, if you had, if I had bought there, say a year ago before that announcement was made, it would have been even, even better. But that's, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. It's really not that hard to find properties that are in the path of growth and that people are very likely to want in the future. I, Joe, I see you asked, what is the average time to sell a deal? And it kind of depends on if it has clear title and if we have any extra steps to take. But um, on the larger deals, they can take a little bit longer. I've had some go 90 to 120 days. But, and there are some that I've had to extend the original purchase agreement, which was six months. So kind of depends on if there's any problems that you have to deal with. But I would definitely, you know, be in, understand that, you know, take the steps. It, that's why it's a great side hus hustle at first, because it's a great, you know, it does take a little time to get going. But I mean, what I love about this type of property is just, it's not hard to get into the investment. It's very hands off. There's not a ton of competition. You don't have to see it in person. You can buy it inexpensively. Um, there will always be a use for land. And if you buy it right, um, you know, even some people, you know, finance it out and can be a, it can be a passive 
income thing if you set it up on payments. That's not how I do it, but I've heard of a lot of people who do it that way. And they just like having that mailbox money. Personally, I just rather have the cash. Sometimes I have to wait a little longer for it. There was a question in the group from Melissa Zettler Carroll. She said, I'm trying to face my analysis paralysis by dissecting my fear. I'm afraid of spending lots of money and not seeing any results. I'm also not looking forward to taking the phone calls. I read priced is cheaper than data tree. Won't I need to buy a data tree anyway to do my due diligence or can I buy price to do my due diligence another way? Yes, I think having data tree is great for due diligence. Can you find the information other ways without an expensive um, subscription? Yes, but you have to look in a lot more places. And if you're like me, <laughs> as soon as I open my computer to do something, I get distracted by all the other notifications, all the other things that pop up. And sometimes I just, I even forget what now, wait, what did I even get on here for? Because now I've done 20 other things and I've spent an hour. So there, so for me, it streams, streamlines the process. It's all, every county in the country is formatted the same way and everything you need is right there at your fingertips. I think at the very least, get the, the, the lowest subscription they'll allow you to have and buy your data from price. If you do it the way I do it and you're buying for five acres or more. Okay, and no, it's not horrible to start out by paying for someone else to take the phone calls. You know, we, none of us have every gift involved or needed to make this business work. Some things we enjoy doing more than others, so if you don't enjoy it, yeah, outsource it. That's the smartest thing you can do to grow your business. Uh, Chris, I see your question. Do I have any problems using the flat fee? I think I already answered that. Let's see, Sam, I like seeing photo. Okay, let me keep, let me keep walking down the list. Let's see. Without Chris, without owning it outright. Yes, I think that's related to the MLS. Yes, I can do that without owning it outright if I have it under contract to purchase and my contract says that I have a right to market. Uh, let's see. What do you say to the people you get their offer wrong in the mail? Where did that go? And have to cancel or renegotiate? Okay, that was a question from Connor Swanson. Thank you for that question, Connor. And that's a hard one to answer because it depends on what's going on with the property. See, um, you know, if like I looked at one yesterday with someone where there's the road and then there was a stream and then there was about 10 feet until it went up this huge uh, slope. I would almost call it a mountain because <laughs> it was really steep. And so the, we were going to have to go back with, a, we were going to try to kill the deal actually. We were going to be like, you know, we offered, I think it was 24000 and we really didn't need to offer more than about twelve, based on, you know, values in the area plus. So we just went back and said, you know, after looking at it closer, we see that we would have to build a culvert or something over this creek and there really is no building envelope for, you know, putting anything up there until this, I just, I just don't know if it's, it's buildable. So, you know, that would be a good reason to go back and say, listen, I, I'm really not sure I can even do the deal and then wait and see if they come back and say oh but surely you could do this or you could do that and you know trying to sell you on it then you could say well maybe I could justify it for 12 and that you know that would just be a way to kind of back into a lower price but a lot of times I have to go in and be expecting to kill the deal and just say look I understand if you don't want to do it it's not what I said at first but when I looked closer I found these reasons and I just can't pay that price so I hope that answers your question you know, I'm really out of time here, but I just want to say the key to my success has been consistent daily action. I just send out blind offers each and every week without fail. I'm currently sending about 3000 a week. So if you take the steps, if you send the mail, you will find success. This is a proven business model. You will find the deals, but consistent daily action. And you can start as small or as large as you would like. There are properties out there for $100 or you can buy some for 124000 I have one under contract for that price. So you can invest your own funds or you can use one of dozens of investment options that are available out there like double closing um, without risking your own money. And if you have questions, reach out to me by posting a question on this page or send me a private message because I would love to hear about your journey into real estate investing. I'd like to know what brought you here and, and what do you need to know to move your your self forward in your land investing career because you can do this and I'm happy to help. Thanks for joining.